right? And after a short break, but by the magic of TV and editing, you didn't hear it. Uh, we are back. Um, so Washington, Brad, next game on the list, Washington minus three and a half at Miami. Ooh, that's a terrible game, huh? Yeah, I, I think you got to go Washington because Miami's really bagged it in, haven't they? Well, I, I kind of disagree with that, man. I think Miami is stronger than people think. I just don't think they have any depth, so they get wasted by the end of the game. I think Miami will jump out to an early lead. The only thing is, like, I would feel better betting this game. Um, in fact, I was really looking forward to betting Miami in this game, and then the Washington Redskins fired Jay Gruden. So I don't uh-huh. really know... I, I don't know what Callahan's going to do with the offense. I don't know what the play calling's going to be like. So I'm t- just taking it off my board to be safe. I liked Miami coming into this game. <clears throat> I just have no freaking clue. How did Miami get so bad so quickly? Uh, I mean, they, when did they turn into this version? I mean, um, I think they've I think they've been masquerading as a team that can play <clears throat> for a couple years or trying to pretend that. And I think they finally, with the new regime in there, they kind of just admitted that they're nowhere close. Uh, you know, I like the, the trade that they made for Rosen. Um, I like that. I, I like that they're trying to build something. I think they're doing what Cleveland did a couple of years ago in stockpiling picks. The only difference is the, the last GM for Cleveland, Shashi Brown, couldn't get the picks right. And the new GM, Glenn Dorsey, just started trading all the picks away for guys like yeah. you know, uh, Landry and uh, OBJ and all these things. So we never really saw that plan and that vision, um, you know, reached. You know, this guy, the new regime for uh, Miami is like a Belichickian regime. They're trying to get rid of guys that don't fit their mold. They're trying to get picks for guys that, you know, you don't want. Here's the thing that I would I was arguing with about Cleveland when they were getting rid of like Alex Mack and he went to, to um, Atlanta and all this stuff. I was like, what, what's the point? What's the point in going six and ten or seven and nine? Well, and what's there the, is no point, really. Yeah, I mean, and what's the point in, in having some guy in the prime of his career that you're extending and not getting anything for it? Let, let him walk and get the compensatory pick. Like, yeah. it does no good to go 6-10 and 10 or 7-9. and nine. You're just stuck in NFL purgatory at that point. So just get really yeah. bad and then come out of it. We, like, we see teams go from really bad to really good if you can get the right staff and, and coaching system in place. The Rams being one of them. They were in the Super Bowl in, like, three years or two years or something like that. So, right, right. you know, yeah. So, I, I, I mean, I think they're okay. I think they need depth. I think think they're that's what their problem is when i watch the games i don't think that miami's poorly coached i don't think that they're not playing hard i just think that they're just kind of like a bad football team washington on the other hand i just don't think that anybody's dialed in there um i don't like that's another one that culture over there is terrible toxic it's it's dan snyder i did a three-point stance on why gruden got fired um you know and and basically this team is just going to be a nightmare until dan snyder sells the team redskins fans know it um, the, the stadium is overrun with opposing team fans. I used to be a season ticket holder. Of the Redskins actually on two separate occasions, I was a season ticket holder and they've, they're so bad. And Snyder is so toxic that I don't even follow the team. Well, I follow him, but I don't, you know, I, I just don't care anymore. I mean, does he have any plans to sell? No. Is that like and he's young. Radar? He was a boy. He was like Richie Rich. He was a boy billionaire. So he's going to have the team for another like 30 years at least. It's yeah. Just gonna right. Be a nightmare right. For that city. <clears throat> Because all he does is hire people that can kiss his butt well. I mean, he hires mm-hmm. like the worst, and he's loyal to the worst people, um, the worst general managers. He's just, yeah, it's it. Sorry, Washington, um, and I know this franchise very, very well. I've you know my first ever game that I watched was the Doug Williams Super Bowl against Denver. I mean, I know him pretty well, but so you're stuck with him, <clears throat> not me. They well, are. not you. Yeah, <laughs> they are. They're stuck. They are. With I them. broke free, man. I broke free. <clears throat> Now I just now I just gamble. Um, yeah, fantasy wise, I, you look these two teams are kind of bad teams. I actually like Colt McCoy this week as a daily fantasy option. Don't like anything else for Washington. If you're going to pick somebody up, it would be Chris Thompson. Um, actually, I take that back. I think Adrian Peterson will have an okay game because I think they'll actually run the ball a little bit more. And Callahan's an offensive lineman guy. Um, so maybe they'll they'll just commit to the run more. Who knows? And you know now these Redskins players are are, are playing for their NFL jobs because. They're going to have a new coach in there. They're going to want to put something good on tape. So there's well, new yeah, motivation. It's just weird. It's just a weird game. So I'm I'm staying away. Um, now as for Miami, um, I don't really like anybody outside of the receivers. I think Devontae Parker and, and Preston Williams are um, are decent um, decent options uh, in daily fantasy. I wouldn't install them in your fantasy lineup. Uh, my computer says Washington heavily. Um, my gut's telling me Miami, and uh, I- I'm just staying away, man. Let's just move it yeah, on. Yeah, right. It's depressing. Let's move it on. 